Hello, it is Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving a midweek mid-difficulty uh, puzzle. And this midweek mid-difficulty edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Noah Bizanson, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are, of course, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, and therefore their generous support sustains this channel, keeps this series going. Very grateful to them for that, as I am uh, grateful to all of the patrons of the Daily Self Patreon campaign. Thanks so much if you are among that group. And if you'd like to be, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video to find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as, of course, the Let's Check the Crosses mug for benefactors. Thanks again to everybody who's a patron. And thanks as well if you um, interact with the channel in ways such as subscribing, which is a big help, uh, liking the videos, commenting on them. Those things are all um, little bits of support that all help pitch in to aiding this channel in the YouTube algorithms and so on. So thanks if you've done any of those things. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server. You can join that via a description field link, and it's a nice friendly chat community uh, discussing these crosswords, other crosswords, other puzzles, and so on. All right, all of that having been said, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a collaboration by two very experienced constructors, Peter A. Collins, who's responsible for over 100 New York Times crosswords, and Bruce Haight, who is responsible for maybe over 60, I believe. Uh, so between the two of them, they've got quite a few credits. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It is a Wednesday crossword, so we'll have some sort of theme. Let's find out what it is and let's start solving. Right, interesting grid. We've got <laughs> we've got a sort of a sort of interesting runic shape, or maybe sort of two interlinked H's. Um, in the middle of the grid. I mean, it certainly looks like a centerpiece, doesn't it? Um, because all everything else we've had is just a few stubby little, stubby little protrusions here. But this looks like really the big, the big center. Oh, and actually, just looking over at the clues, this is actually a bit where it's useful that I that I tend to look for whatever reason at the listed clues rather than oops, rather than the um, the highlighted one up in the upper left. Um, every single one of them starts with an H. And we have two H's here. That's funny. It always, <laughs> I almost want Peter A. Collins' name to start with an H, so that it's hate and Hollins, which it is not. Interesting. Okay, well, I wonder if that, I wonder what that means, <laughs> if anything. Okay, maybe, is that going to be the theme, or is there going to be more theme? That feels like the theme. Well, anyway, let's get let's just get going and see what happens. Holy service. Um, it could be a church service, so a mass, maybe. Uh, let's see if that works with the downs. Hasn't impressed me much. Yeah, meh. Happy days are here again. Goes goes the song. A haughty int. So I think this is going to be mass. A haughty intellectual. A sm smarty pants, or I don't know if I necessarily is it. Do I think smarty pants is haughty enough to be haughty? Maybe it is. Smart Alec is not long enough. Yeah, let's let's try this. We'll see. The 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 smart bit seems likely because humorist Bombeck, yeah, Irma Bombeck. And then hang on to is save. If you save something, you hang on to it, you don't get rid of it. So harsh rule metaphorically is a heavy. Hand? Yes, you could rule with a heavy hand, with harsh rule. I think that's correct. Uh, haute couture name. Haute couture. So this would be... My first thought was YSL for Yves Saint Laurent, the initials, but I think it's probably just the first name, Yves. So there we have it. Um, honored, and, and a, a you know, big name from the sort of fashion world, haute couture. Honored would be... Revered, maybe? And I suppose this could be an adjective or a verb, I suppose. Hatch plans. To hatch plans. Is it, well, interesting. Is it to hatch plans, the verb, or is it plans for a hatch, noun? Plans for a hatch, noun. 
plans related to a hatch? I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what this is, actually. Do I think it ends with an S regardless? To have a gander? No, 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 it doesn't. To have a gander to spy? Maybe? To take a look? Hatch plans. I don't know. To see? Having a rough texture. Probably ends with a Y, so spy. There we go. This will be an adjective. So, hmm. And here we have Hummer's interior. So I think this is not referring to the vehicle, Hummer, but rather literally to the interior of the word. So the, the middle bit of the word Hummer, which is two M's. So I think the answer is simply M's. Does that, does that help me with this? Hatch plans or hatch plans. Uh, maybe hand is wrong. You, you rule with a heavy, I don't know. What about this? Having a rough texture. For some reason, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not quite getting what's going on here. Huge issue for some teens. Acne. Acne is often um, in the puzzle as a teen issue, which make, which makes sense. But um, that's just, this is a common thing in the crossword. So I'm sort of predisposed to think of it when this kind of sort of teen issue arises. So it's just a very small tip. You're not going to use it every day, but you might use it every couple of months. Harsh rule metaphorically. Heavy. So it's not heavy. Oh, no, no, no. It still could be heavy hand. Well, interesting. And that, it, that does sound right to me. Half a soft drink. Coca-Cola. So maybe simply Coca, half of the brand Coca-Cola. Uh, I've never seen that clue that way before, but let's see. Hatch plans. Is something else wrong here? I, I just feel as though I'm not honored. Review. That seems right. Having a rough texture. Coarse? Oh, maybe this isn't spy. No, this is coarse. I should have thought of that earlier. So this is C. To have a gander, to see. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll have I'll have a gander. I'll see. That that's better than spy anyway. Uh, in addition to the crosses working. So hatch plan. Oh, it's a scheme. So it is the verb to hatch plans to scheme. All right. I don't know why exactly I got so tripped up over here. I suppose it was just thinking that having a rough texture as an adjective was likely to end with a Y, which was extremely unjustified. I mean, it may have ended with a Y, but there was no reason to assume it definitely did. Okay, to hustle somebody is to scam them. And helter-skelter scrambles are mad dashes. Okay, well, there we go. After all that, heavy hand was correct. So didn't need to doubt, to doubt that one. Uh, has come as a surprise. This, is, this all has come as... Oh, no, that's not right. Has come as an surprise is obviously not the answer. A Honda Civic competitor from Kia. I'm not sure. Kia, I think there's a Kia Sorento, maybe? That doesn't fit anyway. I don't know what kind of car that is. Um, Kia. Oh, there's a Kia Sportage, which I think they sort of hilariously pronounce Sportage in the ad that runs before every single film in our <laughs> the cinema nearby. Um but that doesn't fit either. Herd at Yellowstone, and a herd of elk you could have. The animal, so Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Having been sloshed out. Spilt, if something's been sloshed out, it's been spilled maybe. Uh, hagiography subjects, abbreviation, this, these would be saints. So hagiography would be kind of biographical material that is written in such a way to uh, sort of extol or glorify its its subject, sort of say all the good parts and exaggerate all the good parts, basically. Uh, hoodless pullovers often worn, oh, and so this, the saints were, were often written about in this kind of hagiographic hagi way. That's, that's what's going on there. Um, hoodless pullovers often worn with other layers. Um... Hoodless pullovers, often worn with other layers. 
What's that K? What would end with a K? Something back, sir? I'm not sure. Hybrid genre of country and 33 across pejoratively could be rap over here, which would then make hip hop something. I don't think I, it's going to be a pejorative term. So it's going to be a sort of slang insult for a combination of country and rap music. I haven't the slightest idea what this is, but it probably starts with hip maybe, but the PK looks strange here. So maybe not. Okay. Honda Civic competitors still don't know that has come as it's come. This is going to seem so obvious in retrospect, this one, and I just can't believe I can't see it. Hobbyists purchase a set or a kit, a kind of model set or a model kit, home to more than 21 million Pakistanis. Well, this could be kit. And then this could be Karachi. Have you, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full goes the children's nursery run. Uh, let's just see if I'm remembering this correctly. Handle letters. Yeah, your handle could be your alias. You're also known as. And home to Anderson Cooper and Aaron Burnett. I think CNN, the news, U.S. cable news network, has has those people. Uh, okay, so this this I think this is right. So. What about the crosses? Hopping mad sort. A hatter? A mad is a hatter? Obviously isn't long enough. Um, hot. Hopping mad. Hot. I don't know. How loose strings might end up. They might end up in a knot. There we go. It's, if you have sort of loose strings in a drawer, they could end up getting entangled and knotted. Okay, well, so that is hot something, but I don't know what. Holler when the game is deadlocked. It's a tie, I suppose. Um, what about this? Hammer sound. Bam? I don't know. Is that... Do hammers go bam, bam, bam? I sort of think of them as going more bang, bang, bang or something. But in three letters, I don't know what other kind of impact sound you'd have. Homemaker from Mayberry. Oh, you know, I've never actually seen this. I think this is the... I think this is the show that... Ron Howard was in as Opie as a young boy, but I've, I don't, I've never actually seen it. I don't know other character names. At least I assume that's what this is referring to, uh, but I'm gonna have to move on for now. Help could be assist, obviously doesn't fit. Hobby shop purchase with a large wood or plastic base, a model, uh, large wood or plastic base, a model, um, what? A model, not a model train, obviously, or a model plane, none of those. Model, not a model car. <laughs> model auto, model. A ship or boat, I guess, if we're thinking of. <laughs> so it wasn't a land vehicle or an air vehicle. It could be a sea vehicle, model ship. And that actually makes more sense than any of the things I said, because the things I said wouldn't necessarily need large bases. Well, the, the the aircraft might, but a train or a car wouldn't need a large base because they could just stand on their own, whereas a boat would because of the, the way that the keel comes to a sort of point. Um, okay, anyway, so model ship, yeah. It could be model boat, but model ship sounds better. Let's look at the crosses. Hollywood's Amanda. Amanda Pete, I recognize. And here's an idea. You might say, great, okay, that is model ship. Hypocrite's Perch, perhaps. I don't know, are you sort of dying on a hill or something? Or what do they mean? Hypocrite's perch, perhaps. High horse? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Because you might tell a hypocrite, get off your high horse. You're being so, you know, you're preaching to me, but you, hypocrite, have committed exactly the same sort of sin or, or logical lapse or whatever. So get off your high horse. I think that's right. Harvey Star James. Oh, right. Jimmy Stewart, James Stewart, the actor in Harvey about, you know, the rabbit. Okay. Household detergent brand is tied. That's, that's done. How deep is your love, singer Barry, Maurice, or Robin? Bee Gees, the Bee Gees. There we go. 
Uh, and so this is an or clue, so it's worth bearing in mind. We're only referring to Barry, Maurice, or Robin. So any one of these three is a BG, is one of the BGs. So there we go. Huffy responds to a threat. Oh, sorry, I was reading this as, I was reading this as something like now hat, as hat as a second word, but it's not. What is the second word? So Huffy responds to a threat or what? There you go, you could say. Okay, good. Hooray. Yeah, I suppose. Is that is that right? Holy cow, boy. Yeah, that's, could respond to something with surprise in that manner. And then Hardy's before air. Do they just mean Thomas Hardy or why is that Hardy in particular? Is there some, is there a specific title that I'm not thinking of? I'm sure this is the answer. Hardy's before. I mean, air is often used in a kind of poetic or archaic or or literary sense to you know as as a as a contraction of of before but yeah i guess that's i think i'm sure that's the answer but i don't 100 percent understand the clue anyway let's let's go back up here high-tech gaming tournament briefly um i don't know actually high-tech gaming tournament i don't I'm not sure about that uh Hopping mad sort. Oh, a hothead with a D there at the end. Great. Hard to believe as a tale. A tall tale is one that would be hard to believe. And then to help is to. So if you help, you you know avail yourself. You put yourself at, to someone else's aid. And then home baker from Maybury. Still don't think I know this. High tech. Oh, I do. I do actually recognize this. I don't know much about this, and I don't think I've ever watched it. But I'm I'm aware that there is a fighting game tournament called EVO. I don't know if that is an acronym that stands for something or if it's short for evolution or what, but I'm sure this is the answer. The EVO tournament, I don't know if it's still going on. I assume it is since it's being clued in here. Okay, so homemaker from Mayberry. Oh, this is not what I, oh, no, B, it must be B as a first name. I don't know the rest, sorry. Helmet, wakers, helmet wearer's potential embarrassment would be Hat hair. There we go. And if something's hard to believe, it's not sure. Heat center of the 2000s. Not sure what that is. Is that, I mean, there's a basketball team. Is it the Miami Heat? Just the answer's not Miami. I was thinking center, in other words, location. But yeah, I'm not, not sure what's going on with that. And also, why would that be the 2000s specifically? Uh, health problem now largely eradicated in the U.S. Interesting. Um, it'll probably be obvious in retrospect, but I'm not sure. Hall of Fame QB Bart. Not the, not the one to ask about this. This is an NFL player, presumably. Hip dressers are cats or... Something probably ends with an S. Uh, having gone to an extra period for short. There we go. In OT, in overtime. There we go. There's something sport related that's simple enough for me to put in the grid. House Actress Ward. You know, I've never seen House, but I have heard of Sella Ward, and that name is four letters long, and she may well have been in House. So let's try it. Hard to believe. It's very hard to believe. It's fishy. That's a fishy story. It's hard to believe. There we go. Great. Okay. Hip dressers are, oh, fops maybe? Someone who's a bit foppish. I don't think of that as being hip necessarily. It can be. I don't know. That's interesting. Sort of combining two sort of tonal adjectives that have a bit of a different kind of valence to me. Hip I think of as being new and current, whereas a fop could be that, but I could also think of a fop as being someone who dresses in a very, it's more about the kind of elaborateness and kind of, well, not elaborateness, but ambition and sort of, uh, I don't know, sort of not letting anything drop, you know, whereas a hip dresser could drop in a, dress in a really casual, really, really kind of dressed down way, but in a hip intentional manner, whereas you wouldn't think a fop would. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm getting carried away here. Oh, heat center of the 2000s. Sorry, I didn't write that in, but 
O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal must have been. I had no idea he played for that team or what his position was. So there you go. I needed the crosses to get it. Health problem now largely eradicated. Oh, polio. There we go. And then homemaker from Mayberry is B. Oh, it must be Taylor. Okay, I don't recognize the name, which isn't a surprise to me, but there we go. That makes the Hall of Fame QB Bart Starr, which doesn't ring a bell, but there we have it. Huge gem, slangily. A rock you could refer to, you know, a ring with a big diamond. It's a big rock. Hacks say. So hacks could be a verb or a noun. And as a noun, it could be a few different things. It could be hacks, obviously, as in the chop itself. But it could also be, you know, if you're a hack, you could be a journalist. But it could also be a hack, someone who maybe is successful on the back of little talent. Um, they all would, I think, need to end with an S, though. Helpful skill for guessers. ESP, extrasensory perception. I suppose that would be a helpful skill if you, in fact, had it. Hang on to something is to keep it. Hotel room option could be a suite, abbreviated S-T-E. And then hacks cuts. There we go. Okay, so the most straightforward meaning of hacks. Uh, hell yes, that is so true. No. Um, not sure. It'll be something like that, but I'm not sure exactly what. High-priced perfume ingredient. Mm, not sure. I assume this will be a chemical component, but I, but it, maybe not. Maybe it's a specific thing, like, I don't know, rose something. <laughs> High school students test result on a scale of one to five. Eight, an AP level? I think AP exams or AP, AP credit... AP, AP exams, I think, were on a scale of one to five. So what would you call the test result? The AP, that's for advanced placement. Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure that it's an AP-related thing because I think that is a one to five scale. Honda Civic competitor from Kia. Kia, I don't know. Hybrid genre of country, right. This is going to be something hip-hop-like. But I can't, I, obviously there's going to be a sort of pun because it says pejoratively. So I can't think, I mean, maybe not. Maybe it won't be a pun. It's just hard to imagine why it would be pejorative unless there was something baked in there to punnily kind of be insulting it. But I don't know. High-priced perfume ingredient. Well, maybe it does start with rose, actually. I didn't say that actually with any specific idea, but with an O, I think it might. He-hawing animal, an ass. There we go, donkey. Hercule Poirot, for short, is a tech, a detective? Oh, AP score. Why didn't... Why wasn't that the first thing that came to mind? Um, anyway, yeah, AP score, that's obviously what it was. Uh, but I didn't think of it. Hercule Poirot, so he's Agatha Christie's uh, detective character and is a tech, a detective. Hamilton cast member, uh, Philippa, Philippa Sue, I do recognize her name. Um, she's one of the... Is she Angelica Schuyler? Maybe I don't remember which Schuyler she was. Uh, oh, rose oil, probably. That's that's presumably a very high-priced perfume ingredient. All right. So hair here would be sir. So hair is, uh, you know, sir or or, or mister in, in German. And so here in the U.S. ostensibly is sir. Okay. Hell yes. Uh, that's, oh, oh, that's so true. Right. Okay. I think I had something like that. That is so true maybe, but didn't think to contract it to save the extra letter. There we go. All right. And here we have hurrah at a stadium would be ole. So maybe in a, in a football game. And then Honda Civic competitor from Kia could be, oh, Spectra, maybe. I don't think I recognize that, but it feels like it just kind of feels like one of those weird sort of made up car names. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not, I guess it's not technically a, an invented word, but, but it would be plural if it weren't, wouldn't it? Okay. Hybrid genre of country. Maybe it is inspector, but I, I want it to be hybrid genre of country and 33 across pejoratively. Oh, hill hop maybe as in sort of hills, like the country countryside sort of 
environment? I bet that's what it is. I've never heard that before, but I bet that's the answer. Hoodless pullovers often worn with other layers. I don't know, like, this can't be right. Maybe this isn't Spectra or maybe this isn't Hillhop. I don't know either of these as actual pieces of knowledge, so I can't be confident about either. I'll have to, let me, let me work on this bit up here. Hallelujah singers, a choir. There we go. In a church, for instance. Hurried past. If you hurried past someone, you avoided, evaded, no, but hurried past, ran by. There we go. I needed a, a past tense that wasn't going to end with an ED because that wouldn't work here. Hard drinks similar to bourbons, whiskeys, or ryes, I mean. So <laughs> ryes and bourbons are both are both whiskeys, both American whiskeys. Okay, host. MC, maybe? They, 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 this is another thing they really like in the New York Times crossword is MC spelled out in this kind of phonetic way. So uh, MC for master of ceremonies, but it turned into a, a kind of word in this manner. Okay, so, oh, crew necks, hoodless pullovers often worn with other layers. There we go. A crew, a crew neck shirt. There we go. All right, great. And then hones as a blade. You could wet wet a blade. You could you could hone it on a, you know, a whetstone or something. Okay, so, ha, huh, I bet you could say sarcastically. And then historically, something happened. Historically, it happened once in the past. Hog part is a ham hock. There you go. You could put that in a, in a soup or something. And then has come as no surprise. Why did I, why did I have so much trouble with that? I knew that this one would seem <laughs> annoyingly obvious when it eventually came in. Ah, this wasn't hill hop; it was hick hop. Even more, that that's more a st that's more directly pejorative. There we go. Okay, so there we go. And there we have it. I think, as it turns out, the theme was just this H thing. <laughs> just. For whatever reason, I wonder if there's a story behind this or if it's it's, it's in tribute to a person or so, maybe whose initials are HH. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, obviously, how would I? But there we go. We have a double H crossword in which two H's are illustrated in the grid. And I guess maybe one of the H's for all, is for all the crosses and one for all the downs. Who knows? But every single clue in the puzzle begins with an H, even the ones that start as a kind of, you know, half complete sentence. So there we go. And it's a funny, funny puzzle with a theme that is straightforward, but slightly mystifying. Certainly was more quickly able to identify it than I was yesterday's uh, theme. And uh, let me know if you have any idea what this is about. If, if you happen to know, I don't know, is today the anniversary of something that, to, to which this is, you know, in which this is tribute? I don't know. Uh, but in any case... <laughs> It was it was a uh, it was a perfectly fun puzzle, and I think it gave me challenge throughout. I mean, you know, it wasn't as though there were many incredibly individually difficult things. Just kind of one of those puzzles where I was facing resistance throughout. Just always had to be always had to be on guard for whatever reason, and um, and so it kept me busy. It kept me busy throughout the full twenty five minutes of my solve. Let me know how you did with this one, and uh, I'm curious. I'll check out the uh, Discord in the comments, as always. And I'll be back, of course, tomorrow with a Thursday crossword, which should have a slightly more complex theme than this. Although, I mean, this would have been <laughs> this would have been a challenging crossword to write, certainly, because they they were so limited. I mean, it's impressive having so many one-word clues, given that they were limited to the set of words that begins with H. I mean, it's it's impressive in that regard. Uh, but from a solver's perspective, it was a very simple theme. We didn't have to worry about it one bit. And uh, that won't be the case tomorrow. So join me for that Thursday puzzle. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh -huh.